Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to make a video about how to deal with the dreaded creative blocks. If you're an artist, a writer, or creative of any medium, you know what I'm talking about. We've all been there. Some of those creative blocks can last for weeks, months, or even years. I can't tell you how many I've been through. But in recent years, they usually don't last long. Because I've implemented these super useful tips I'm about to share with you in this video. Whether you're uh, staring at a blank canvas, a half-written page, or just can't seem to get into the group, creative blocks are the worst. But do not worry. I have some fun, easy, and unexpected tricks that will spark your creativity in no time. All of these have worked wonders for me in the past, and I really hope you find them super helpful as well. So let's dive right into it, shall we? Here are 12 simple ways to overcome creative blocks. Number one, go for a walk, especially in nature. First up, go for a walk, preferably in nature. There's without a doubt something magical about stepping outside away from your workspace and getting outdoors. It clears your head, gives, your fr it gives you fresh air, and nature has a way of sparking inspiration when you least expect it. Plus, studies show that walking, especially in nature, boosts your creativity by up to 60%. A simple walk can refresh your mind, and it is an excellent exercise for your body and your brain as well. It gets the blood flowing and clears your head. Plus, nature is the original source of creativity. Plants, animals, sounds, colors. Whenever I feel lost and not sure where to go, I always go back, back to basics. That is nature. So lace up those shoes and let your mind wander. Number two, dive into art history or design books. If you're a visual person looking through art history or design books, this can be a game changer. Art isn't just about creating. It's about connecting with ideas that have come before you. Next up, take a trip through art history. Grab a big, beautiful art book and just flip through the pages. Don't have any inspiring art, art books at home? Not a problem. Get yourself over to the closest local library and give yourself permission to explore new books. Let yourself soak in the genius of those who came before you. For this, I'm not talking about reading a whole book. Just let yourself be delighted by a visual feast of images from other artists from the past or the present. Get in touch with your inner child and just look at the printed images on the book. Whether it's ancient sculptures or contemporary designs, Looking at other people's work can spark something new. Sometimes seeing other artists, how they solve creative problems or explore new techniques can light that spark in your own work. A random page can lead up to something unexpected completely. For me, this ha is like hanging out with history's greatest artists and listening to the advice of the great masters. Number three, grab a random book and find an idea. Okay. Here's a fun one. Grab a book, any book, from your shelf. Flip through a random page and read a random line, a random sentence, and let your mind roam. Doesn't matter what the book is about, it could even be a dictionary. Remember, it does not have to be re related to your work at all. In fact, if it's not, that could be even better, as you might be surprised by the connections you can make with totally unrelated subjects. Art is all about making connections. Now, you might just find a new perspective or an idea waiting to surprise you. Sometimes the weirdest connections come from the most unexpected places. You could find a phrase that suddenly unlocks a whole new idea. Think of it like a creative fortune telling. Oh, and if you get carried away reading the rest of the book, hey, why not? Number four, go and visit an art gallery or museum. This is a simple one, but it has worked wonders for me in the past. Just get out of the house and visit an art gallery or museum, even if the artwork you see is not your type of art. Just go with an open mind to learn and appreciate other voices, other forms of expression, other art forms. Have a closer look at how the artwork was done and try to understand it, in it within a historical and cultural context. 
What's the meaning of it? What is this particular artist trying to convey with his or her work? What am I getting from this whole experience? Having this internal conversation after seeing the art could open new creative possibilities that you might have just overlooked. Seeing someone else's work up close often gives you a new, fresh way of looking at your own work as well. And hey, it's always good to get out of your own head for a while. Number five, do something totally unplanned. Here's the wild card. Do something completely different from what you have planned. Have a whole day of work set up? Scrap it. Call a friend, follow artists, go for a coffee together. Sometimes all you need is just a fresh new perspective. Talking with friends or fellow artists can bring new insights. Go to the movies, bowling, or check out this new cafe in town. Doing something totally unexpected can reset your brain and bring fresh ideas. You never know when inspiration might strike. Ever had one of those days where things are just not clicking? It might just be the right time to throw off your plan out the window and go do something completely different from what you had in mind. It's social, inspiring, and a solid excuse to take a break from your own work. Plus, it's fun. All, all your friends are busy? Not a problem. When was the last time you spent an afternoon wandering around your city? Or why not go explore a new or unfamiliar spot in town? Just get off your private comfort zone and experience the world out there. Just for a moment, simply check out where the public spaces are and what, where people are hanging out and go for a walk there. Breaking out of the routine gives your brain a chance to reset and sometimes that's all you need to get back in the zone. Number six, relax with some good music in a cup of coffee or tea. Here's another simple one. Take a break. Make yourself a cup of tea or coffee and listen to some music. Just relax, get in the zone. Music has a way of pulling us out of our heads and into, the, into a different flow. Pop in some headphones and chill out. Music can soothe the soul. And sometimes step, stepping away from the pressure to be productive is exactly what your mind needs to recharge. Listen to your favorite band or go for something completely new. Be open to a different sound and vibe. Before you know it, ideas will start flowing back again. Combine that with a little caffeine and you've got the perfect recipe for relaxation. Let your mind drift and you'll be amazed at how ideas start to surface when you're not forcing them. Number seven, tarot reading or meditation or yoga. Okay, this one is in more for the spiritual incline and if you're open to it. Just do a tarot reading, pull some cards and see what kind of insights they reveal about your creative block. Tarot reading can be an awesome brainstorming tool as well. The cards can help you see things in a new light, find hidden meaning in your work, and maybe even spark a whole new direction. This one I use all the time, and it always works. Believe me. And the thing is, and the thing is, you don't have to do fortune telling, divination, or be an expert tarot reader. Just be open to letting the cards show you a new way of thinking about your work. If tarot is not your thing, not a problem. You can meditate, do some yoga, or just light a candle and breathe. Getting in touch with your inner self can help you connect with your creativity. Meditation or yoga works wonders to reconnect with yourself and clear your mind. Light some incense, get in sync with your soul, and see where the quiet takes you. In this rapid age of information technology, we often forget of nurturing our souls with ri daily rituals that can enrich our spiritual lives and therefore our creative spirit in the process. Number eight, rearrange your workspace. A little feng shui for your creative flow. Sometimes creative blocks come from being too comfortable or even bored with your environment. Often it has to do with having too much clutter a cluttered space clutters the mind, so perhaps it's time to clean up. Try moving things around, changing the lighting, or switching up your desk setup. A fresh workspace can equal a fresh mind. Trust me, it can be very effective. Sometimes I've noticed the light just isn't hitting in the right angle for my easel, or the spot where I sit where to paint, or, or where I'm painting is just too crowded with stuff. I might have to clear the way, clean up, and rearrange my workspace. 
I find it useful to think of the workspace not just as a mirror to the mind, but also to the soul. In this context, it would be helpful to visualize it as a sacred space, much like a temple. Often the physical space you live in and work reflects your own soul and how you're feeling at a spiritual level. Perhaps this is what's blocking your energy. Sit down for a moment and rethink how everything is arranged. If necessary, draw a plan and consider a different arrangement. A little change once in a while can really work wonders. Number nine, try a different medium. Paint outside the lines. Feeling blocked? Change the medium. If you're a painter, try sculpting. If you're a writer, try doodling. Switching up how you create can break the monotony and lead to, a, to new ideas. The key here is to play. Let yourself make a mess and explore without any pressure. You don't have to be an expert at it. Just enjoy the process of learning or relearning how to use a different medium. A simple variation of this can also be drawing with your left hand if you're right-sided. I remember doing this and drawing upside down for a time. Results were surprisingly good at the time and it allowed me to see my work in a different light. If you change medium, it doesn't have to be far removed from your own primary medium either. Say you work with oils on canvas, try using pastel on paper. I guarantee you, it'll make you see and feel oils differently. Hey, and sometimes a fun little experimental side project could even turn into your best idea yet. When you return to your primary medium, you'll have a different take on it. You will come back to it from a different angle. Number 10, create a journal. Write or draw. Here's number 10. Grab yourself a journal. Journaling is a fantastic way to tap into your emotions and ideas. The ones that might be buried under your creative block. Write about how you're feeling, what's been in your mind, or maybe some dreams or project ideas you've been putting off. This is your space, so there's no pressure. Just get those thoughts on paper. And if you're not into the mood to write, no problem. Go to your backyard, patio, or park. And on a, in a quiet spot, just draw what you see. It's not about making a masterpiece. It's about freeing your mind and letting yourself play with ideas. Journaling, whether in words or sketches, can be incredibly liberating. I do it all the time and have a significant collection of what I call drawing di diaries. It is such a pleasure to flip through the pages and look back through the years and see how much I've grown as an artist and human being. And this brings us to the next tip. 11. Meditate and reflect on past achievements. Celebrate yourself. This one has worked for me multiple times in the past. Take some time to reflect on what you've already accomplished. When you're stuck, it's easy to forget how far you've come. Meditate on your past achievements. Look at the works you've created that you're most proud of and think about what you've learned from them. Let this be a quiet moment without distractions. Just you, your thoughts, and your past successes. This isn't about comparing yourself to others or even to your current self, to the past, but about appreciating your journey. You've created before and you'll create again. Sometimes all you need is a moment of silence to reconnect with your passion and remind yourself what you're capable of. Look at what you've mastered and perhaps go back to that for a moment. Rembrandt used to say, practice what you know, and it will help you make clear what you do not know. This does not mean repeating yourself, but rather reinforcing your stronger muscles in order to get you to the right mindset to deal with the weaker ones. Number 12, take a break from social media. Unplug to recharge. And finally, last but definitely not least, seriously, Give your brain a break from that endless scrolling, notifications, and distractions. Social media can be incredibly addictive and destructive as well when not used in moderation. Creative blocks often come from overstimulation. Turn off the phone, step away from the screens, and just let, let yourself for a moment be bored for a little while. Replace those dopamine hits with the constant scrolling with other activities or simply just being with yourself. I remember feeling bored for hours before there was any internet. 
This is like reconnecting with your inner child. But that's what, when I had so much time in my hands to make art without so many distractions. Disconnecting from technology for a while can be highly beneficial, not just for your creativity, but also for your soul and overall well-being. It is an overall emotional and spiritual detox. Give it a try. You would be surprised how this can really spark creativity. And there you have it. 12 easy, simple ways to bust through the creative blocks. Whether it's journaling through your thoughts, meditating uh, on your past work, or getting inspired by nature and art history, chilling out with some good music or doing a tarot reading. There's no one size fits all solution. It's all about reminding ourselves there's always a way to get back in touch with our creativity and finding what works for you. So what's your go-to trick when you're feeling stuck? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you found these tips useful. Anyway, thanks for watching. Remember creativity is all about exploration and sometimes that journey is the most important part. Enjoy the process. Do not stress over results. It isn't about perfection. It's about finding your own path one step at a time. Until next time, bye-bye. Thank you very much for sticking around till the end. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, hit that subscribe button, and tap the notification bell so you don't miss out on future content. Also, check out the video on the screen right now for more insights and inspiration. Your support means everything to me and helps this channel grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.